She was like a breath of fresh air. She was witty and funny. Most importantly, she appreciated me for who I was. I dated more than one girl whose mission in life seemed to be to change me into what they thought their ideal man should be, Janet wasn't like that. I met her when we were both taking Photoshop night classes at a local college. I had just started digital photography and knew next to nothing about how to proofread photos on the computer. I stopped using the darkroom and tried to bring myself into the 21st century. It turned out to be a lot harder than I thought it would be. Damn, what have I done? I said, looking at the screen. My picture had just gotten 10 times bigger than it should have been. Looking in my notes, I found an icon that could be used to undo what I had done. I'll never get to that, I said in disgust. The woman next to me began to giggle. That's not funny, I told her. Now I was more than embarrassed. Yes, it is, she looked at my screen. Take a look, just resize the print by adjusting the pixels, or click on the size you want. I moved my mouse, clicked on what I thought was the right icon, and saw that my footprint was too small this time. Shit, I muttered aloud. There was more than one person looking at me now. You don't mind, I've got a problem here, okay? They stared at me, and I stared back at them defiantly. Meanwhile, the girl next to me continued to giggle, still working on her print. I'm just glad my livelihood doesn't depend on my grade in this class. I've never failed a class in my life, but now I'm just bombing, I groaned, hitting the cancel button for the tenth time in the last half hour. My first class was not going well. I reviewed my notes and started again. I cropped my photo to the right size, adjusted the color and contrast, and started to feel pretty confident for the first time that evening. I wanted to resize it to make an 8 by 10 inch print. I clicked on size, entered 8 by 10, ignoring the pixels, whatever they were, and hit enter. It got too big again. All that was left on the screen was the bird's wing, no head, no legs, no body, just that damn wing. Jesus Christ, I frowned, staring at the screen and pushing myself off the back of my chair. Fuck it, I flicked the switch and shut down the computer. Damn, I didn't eject the disk. I was starting to hate the whole thing. I turned the computer back on, got the usual message that I had shut down the machine incorrectly and that it would have to go through a full diagnostic. I can't win. You're keeping yourself busy, why don't you relax? I heard her calm voice. How could one be calm in a situation like this? That's easy for you to say, you don't seem to have any problems. Look, I have a few problems, but I'm not going crazy like some people here. If you want, I'll walk you through it all, but you have to promise not to freak out on me. Okay, I promise, but can I use a couple cuss words if it doesn't work? She threw me an angry look. Okay, no swear words, but if my brain explodes, it will be your fault, not mine. For the next 20 minutes she controlled the mouse and made all the clicks. I took notes and asked questions. Why are you here? You seem to know almost as much as the instructor. I have an older version of Photoshop and it will only cost me $50 to attend this course. They teach you how to use the newest version and if I see that it's worthwhile, I'll pay the $150 to upgrade. If not, I'll just get a little hands-on experience while waiting for the next version to come out. Great picture by the way, don't you think? Of course I took it, I replied, a little surprised by her question. All the pictures on that disc are mine. Don't bite my head off, I was just asking. Like I said, great shot. What did you use as a lens? Canon f2.8, 70-200mm lens. The version with ultrasound and internal stabilization? She asked. Both. Are you a photographer? Not really, it's just that I do a lot of photography at night and long distances. I do mostly sunrises and wildlife photography. After a long night spent taking pictures, the last thing I want to see is the sunrise, I don't like mornings, she replied. My name is Steve, by the way. My name is Janet. Nice to meet you, Janet. If you don't mind, could we go through this again so I control the mouse this time? I want to make sure my notes are accurate. That's how I met Janet. We sat next to each other for the entire 12 lessons. 
She took her time explaining things that I didn't learn right away. Sometimes after class we would stop and have a cup of coffee or a beer. That's how I found out that she had a child at home. I have to go, she told me one evening. My mom is watching my daughter, and it's getting late. With those words, she waited for my response. How old is she? Her name is Tammy, and she just turned seven. She caught my gaze on her left hand. No, I'm not married, in case you're wondering. I've been there. Sounds like it wasn't the most memorable time of your life. That's a story for another time when we have more than an hour to kill time. I'll see you next Wednesday. She turned and walked out of the coffee shop. Hmm, single with a seven-year-old. I spent the next few minutes finishing my coffee and figuring out how old she was. She looked to be about 22, but let's see, 18 plus 7, so she had to be at least 25. I was 27, so I guess there was no problem. I knew she'd planted that bomb on me to see how I reacted. Hopefully I passed her little test. I made you a CD of some of my best work, I handed Janet a disc in class the next week. It's a sort of thank you for all your help over the past few weeks. Believe it or not, at one point I thought about dropping out. You don't look like a quitter? I'm not, but I just didn't realize it. I know I let myself do it, but I couldn't get my head or brain or anything else to do it. So this is my way of thanking you for your help, I said with a wide smile. That's it? No money, no dinner? I think I was a little taken aback. It was a joke. No one has ever given me anything like that, and I don't know what to say except thank you. The classes got easier and easier as I got the basics down. I still made mistakes now and then, but I kept on my toes for a change. I didn't pay much attention to Janet. I could see she was busy with her screen, and today I wanted to do it myself. At halftime we went downstairs, grabbed a couple cokes and sat outside. You're good, damn good, if you haven't realized it already. What model of Canon are you shooting with now? Right now it's a Canon 20D. I, or should I say the company I work for, use Canon 5D cameras. It's a step forward, but to shoot at a distance, I lack the 1.65 conversion ratio of the older models. I have to use a 1.5 or 2.0 extender to get really long shots, she explained to me. What distance do you shoot from? I asked her. Well, let's just say that most of the time I use a 400mm f4.5 SLR lens with a 2.0 extender. Wow, what are you photographing, hairs on a gnat from a hundred meters away? Something like that. The break ended and we headed back upstairs. Do you mind if I do a little work on these pictures? You know, clean them up a bit. No, you can do whatever you want with them. They're a little uneven, especially some of the black and white ones, that's why I'm taking this course, to fix what needs fixing. Give me a couple weeks and I'll see what I can do. I especially like the one with two babies in the nest. I call them boys. They were white herons, a couple weeks old. The two of them were looking over the top of the nest with their necks stretched out as far as they could go, and their eyes seemed to be looking right at my camera. I decided it was a good shot. Everyone who's seen it thinks it's pretty darn comical. Well, that's a good shot, and I thank you for the disc. For the first time, I began to feel more relaxed in class. I wasn't pestering Janet and the instructor, and my confidence was growing. I was never great, I never had that much free time, but I just wanted to learn the basics. I wanted to be able to tweak prints that just weren't perfect. However, there was one big problem. I was a perfectionist and I was damn competitive. I never accepted anything less than perfection. When I would put a piece of work out and it didn't take first place, I would get angry. I got a million second and third places, but never first place. Maybe after this class I can finally achieve what has eluded me all this time. Janet was beaming as she walked into the penultimate class. I made a CD for you with three pictures I finished this week, I think you'll be impressed. The pictures turned out fantastic. Wow, is all I can say. Are you sure these are the pictures I gave you? They didn't take as much work on them as you might think. I tweaked the color a bit and cut out all the extras so your eye would be drawn to what you photographed. Do you like it? 
I love it. I smiled approvingly at her. It deserves more than just coffee. How about I take you out to dinner Saturday night? She hesitated for a few seconds before answering. I'm busy this weekend, but maybe another time. Who was I kidding? A pretty girl like her should have a steady boyfriend by now. I gave her back one of those fake smiles you give to someone who just gave you bad news and told her it's okay, we'll do it another time. On the last night of class, I turned in all of my papers. I think I did a great job, and although I wasn't expecting an A, I was hoping for at least A-B Janet didn't show up, and why would she? Janet didn't show up, and why would she? She just attended class and didn't turn in any work anyway. You think you're going to pass? If it were me, I'd probably give you a C-plus and make you retake the class. I heard a voice behind me. If it wasn't for the fact that you still owe me dinner and don't know how to contact me, I wouldn't even be here today. That lifted my spirits. Here are my cell and work numbers. Call me and let me know when you're free. Oh, by the way, I love Chinese. How about this weekend? I asked, hoping she could hear the excitement in my voice. I'll check my schedule now, I work a lot on weekends. Why don't you call me tomorrow night? But if you don't mind, I'm still at work, so I need to hurry up. Maybe by Saturday I'll have a chance to finish a couple more of your pictures. After she gave me her phone number and told me to call, I heard nothing. On Saturday, it all worked out. Instead of picking her up, she decided it would be a good idea for us to meet at a restaurant. I guess she didn't want me to know where she lived until she found out if I was a serial killer or a pedophile. Since I was neither, I wasn't too worried. I've never eaten here, although I've only heard good things about this place. It serves both Chinese and Japanese food, so if you like sushi, you can get your portion. All of this was explained to me when we met at the entrance of the restaurant. This was the first opportunity to really explore what she looked like outside of class. Short dark brown hair, about 5 feet 4 inches tall, and no more than 110 pounds. A slightly larger than average nose, but she had emerald green eyes that I really liked. Nice ass as far as I could tell, but I wasn't too sure about the breasts. I probably looked at her longer than I intended when she asked me if I approved of her. I'm sorry, this is the first time I'm looking at you. So what the hell have you been doing for the last 12 weeks? Working on not making a fool of myself, but I noticed you have a nice appearance. I'll leave that alone and the fact that you were mentally undressing me a moment ago. It was one of those dinners that takes all night, and I was thankful for that. Thank goodness we started with her. Janet spoke candidly about her past and what she was looking for in life, if she was looking for anything at all. My ex was a scumbag sucking cheater. We lived for three years, which was two and a half years more than he deserved. One day I caught him cheating and gave him a gift. I forgave him on the condition that if he did it again, it was over. When his friend called one night to interrupt their date, I almost broke his neck when he got home from work. I had already packed his things and left them in the driveway in black garbage bags. When he started banging on the door and threatening me, I called the damn police. When he left that night, I never saw or heard from him again. Like I said, my marriage lasted almost three years. The only thing he did right was give me Tammy. She is the most important thing in my life, so you can understand that right away. It seems like he set a pretty low bar for any guy who followed him. There's no bar, just inflated expectations on my part. I don't play games or settle for second best, you can ask the five previous guys I dated. They thought I'd be an easy target. You know, the hard-working single mom who doesn't get a chance to date very often. Who can be wined, dined and bedded, if not on the first date, certainly on the second. Are all men really that stupid? These guys were. And the one who wouldn't take no for an answer? Yeah, he's probably still sucking his left nut after he ran into the toe of my cowboy boots, she said with a slight smile. I'm not saying I'm bad, but the bad ones don't mess with me. Let me guess, you're trying to scare me, aren't you? Not to frighten, only to inform. Well, I dated witches, bitches, a few nice girls who thought they were God's gift to men. I've only met two that I've fallen in love with and lost. The first one thought I didn't fit her idea of a perfect husband 
and the other one I did something very stupid and lost her, but that was a long time ago. Smart people grow up and learn from their mistakes, at least I think so. There must have been something really bad to dump a good-looking guy like you. Let's just say I did something stupid and leave it at that, okay? No problem, I don't want to pry. Spoken like a true woman. Apparently Janet didn't know how to take that, so she hit me from the other side. What do you do when you're not taking gorgeous photos? I run a crew that assembles trade show booths for all the national trade shows. I work in New York, Chicago, Las Vegas, and Orlando. At any trade show that comes to town, I make sure everything is set up correctly and that all exhibitors are happy. Trade shows? Yeah, like the new electronics show, car shows, home construction, and a million other kinds. They usually run from Thursday through Saturday. I make sure they are ready on time, packed and shipped back by Sunday morning. If I have two shows going on at the same time, I sometimes pick the one I'm most interested in and work it. I have enough acquaintances, and if I need something, I can always find a good deal from one of my friends. Doesn't it get boring after a while? I mean doing the same thing from week to week, asked Janet, probably wondering how often I was in town. It's always something new and I get to know a lot of people. The only problem is that it gets a bit lonely traveling all the time. You eat alone, maybe have a drink at the hotel bar and then go to your room to sleep. The money is good, but that's the only downside. Steve, a good-looking guy like you, there must be a million girls working on the show who would want your shoes under their bed at night, she said almost sarcastically. Not anymore, I replied. When they finally kicked us out, we ended up in the parking lot. Well, Mr. Stephen Moore, I had a wonderful time tonight. Well, Miss Janet Collins, so do I. We both looked at each other and started laughing loudly. Okay, I know I'm not going to have any luck today. I told her with slight sarcasm. She studied me and apparently waited for my next line. Now that the first and most difficult date is behind us, the next 10 or 20 should go smoothly. So, if I'm not mistaken, you want to meet me again because I'm hellbent on seeing you again. This time, why don't you check your schedule and give me a call? I'm free most of the night, but I'm not the kind of person who needs to worry about anyone else. You seem confident. If I wasn't, there's no way you'd let me do this, I said as I put my arms around her and gave her a huge tongue kiss to keep things interesting. Thank God she didn't resist and didn't rest her knee on my groin. That was great. Maybe we should do it again, she said, opening the car door and slipping inside. Through the open window I received another kiss, not as sweet as the first, but still enjoyable. A lady doesn't run after a man, so let me know your work schedule for the next two weeks and we'll be sure to do it again. Janet kissed me, and the bulge in my pants told me I was interested in this girl, even though she looked like a real hard ass. The only thing I could surmise was that she'd been abused at least once before, and she was damn sure it wouldn't happen again. I wasn't sure what I wanted, but meeting her was on my priority list. Because of her work schedule and mine, we had a hard time getting together for the next date and the ten more that followed. I learned that Janet worked for a detective firm. She didn't tell me much except that she was one of the four partners in the firm. When I pressed her and asked her what types of investigations she does, she said various and mostly confidential, so she couldn't tell me anything specific. I asked if she would let me go with her sometime. She looked at me with a look that I was used to by now and said no way in hell. I waved her off. When I suggested we spend a full day at Disneyland's Magic Kingdom, Janet informed me that she liked Epcot much better. But I'm willing to bet that Tammy would probably like the Magic Kingdom better. That, my friend, started a discussion that lasted all evening. Instead of going out, we ordered dinner after realizing we weren't even close to solving our problems. Steve, I don't ask Tammy out on dates. I don't want her to meet every guy I go out with because most of them don't stick around long. Tammy is too precious to me. I don't want her to get attached to some guy so he'll dump her when things don't go his way. There's no way I'm letting her go through that heartache. Look, I don't know where this is going, but I think you've already realized that I'm not just in it for your hot body. That brought a slight smile to her face. Tammy is a huge part of your life, and if we're going to move on, don't you think you're obligated to meet her? Hell, she might hate me and I might think she's a spoiled brat like her mom and leave you. 
This time it was my turn to smile. We spent most of the next two hours figuring out each other's intentions and what we were both looking for in this new relationship. I wasn't ready for a serious relationship yet, but I wanted us to be exclusive in the future. Janet wanted to know what I meant by an exclusive relationship and when I told her that, she wasn't too happy about it. You mean not going anywhere or with anyone? What if it's just a guy friend, you know, like having a couple drinks after work? I don't know how jealous or insecure you are about having friends of the opposite sex, but I have several, even outside of work. Janet, if you want to date others, just let me know and I won't have to worry about putting any effort into the relationship. We can date whenever we want and have a good time and that will be the end of it. However, if you're looking for something more than just a casual boyfriend-girlfriend relationship, then we should be exclusive. One day we'll be intimate and I don. T want to worry about who I'm sleeping with. You think I'm sleeping around? Janet replied irritably. What about you? Who do you sleep with? I'm not sleeping with anyone, including you, much to my dismay. You just need to make a decision on where you want to go, that's all. After that, I'll know how to proceed. It didn't go the way I thought it would. I thought she'd be thrilled that I wanted to include Tammy in our plans. This girl had serious trust issues and I was giving her the opportunity to work them out with me. I knew that could only happen if we had an exclusive relationship. I didn't want to worry about someone else muddying the waters. I also didn't want a third person in our bed, so to speak, so I decided to give her the time she needed to make a decision. When she called Tuesday and wanted to meet Thursday or Friday night, I told her I couldn't. I'll be in Chicago until noon Sunday, working the dry cleaning equipment show at the McCormick Convention Center. I'm flying out tomorrow, so let me call you when I get back, or we can talk on the phone in the evenings. Janet wanted to talk face to face, but had been calling my cell phone for a week. Steve, I'm gonna miss you. That sounded like thunder to me. She called me on Friday night just before 10 o'clock. I had already finished dinner and was listening to the band in the hotel lounge when she called. It was pretty loud in there, and the band from out of town was in full force. The women were all worked up, yelling and laughing. Hey kids, what's up? I said, answering the phone. Tammy's asleep and I was just finishing up my journal when I remembered you and thought I'd call. What have you been up to? Just listening to a pretty decent lounge band before heading upstairs. Things are going perfectly this week. Hope to catch the 11 o'clock Sunday morning flight if all goes according to plan. At that moment, two drunk women from the group staggered over to the bar, bumped into me, and spilled their drinks on me. Ladies, please watch where you're going, I tried to say in a polite manner. I grabbed some napkins off the bar trying to wipe my pants. Let me help you wipe up that wet spot, one of them muttered, grabbing a handful of tissues as well. Maybe we should take you upstairs and get you out of those pants, she announced a little too loudly. Her friend giggled. It's all right, ladies, it's nothing. Thank goodness they took the hint and staggered away. Sorry about that. I said to Janet when I was finally able to return my attention to her call. Like I said, some people just can't drink. Sounds like you're in the middle of a big party, Janet said loudly. No, everyone's just blowing off steam. You take these people out of their usual environment, give them a little drink, and they go crazy, I tried to explain to her. Sounds like you have your hands full. Why don't you call me when you get back to town, she ended our conversation and disconnected. Was it just me, or was there a note of irritation in her voice before she hung up? I didn't hesitate, and we ended up talking the following Tuesday night. We had dinner at my house and determined a list of restrictions on our relationship. We would be exclusive in every sense of the word, and Tammy would participate in all of our activities where appropriate. She liked the idea of a trip to Disney, but she wouldn't agree to the three of us having dinner at my house. We were going to take things slowly and quietly. I was feeling pretty good and filled our glasses with wine again. To us, I toasted, touching my glass to hers. We both drank our glasses. When I moved forward to set mine on the table in front of us, she pulled me to her and gave me the most sensual kiss to date. Our lips and tongues made love to each other. She moved from my side to my waist and we continued to touch each other with our lips and exchange saliva. 
It had been a long time since I had had such a hot woman in my arms. I was growing rapidly as she mounted my belly. Can you say lap dance? Because that's exactly how I felt right now. She stopped for a split second and pressed her lips to mine, wrapping her arms around my neck. I don't know what made me do it, but I stood up and, with my legs around her waist, moved toward my bedroom. One misstep could have seriously hurt us both, and I thanked God that my bedroom was on the second floor. I laid us both on the bed and breathed a sigh of relief that we had made it safely. Then it hit me, I didn't have any condoms. I figured we'd just talk tonight, and I wasn't going to make my move until Saturday after dinner. Maybe she was on the pill, I could only hope so. As our clothes melted and our lips and tongues got even hotter, I probably should have said something. After we made love, she asked. Long time no see, was all she said. What kind of bachelor pad have you set up here? Who's ever heard of a guy not having a nightstand defense? For a minute there, I even wondered if I should ask you for a Ziploc bag. We both laughed. I told her it wouldn't happen again, and it didn't. After that, we became an official couple. Neither of us liked the other's work schedule, but we learned to live with it. Whenever I started asking questions about her work and types of clients, she would pull back a little. Steve, I can't talk about my clients. 90% of the time, litigation will ensue because of what we find out, and I don't want to jeopardize any case by discussing it with you. I didn't like it, but I understood. I just don't want to have to call you 007 or something. I let it pass my ears. When I brought Janet and Tammy to meet my parents, she was nervous as hell. Relax, they won't bite, and if they like you half as much as I do, you'll do just fine. The evening went well until my mom and Janet started talking about my past. She told my mom about her ex-husband, and my mom told her about my ex-fiancé. I didn't know Steve was engaged. She threw a surprised look in my direction. Yeah, but that was a long time ago. I think Steve was too wild for himself then. They're both lucky they never got married. With Steve's wandering eye and Beth being so stroppy, it wouldn't have worked out for them. It's a good thing Steve's grown up. I didn't hear everything they discussed, but it was enough for me to realize that I was a dead man. So I pretended I hadn't heard anything and hoped Janet wouldn't bring it up. The truth was that I cheated on Beth when I was out of town for one week and she found out about it. It turned out horribly, and though I begged her to forgive me, she said if I cheated, I cheated. The wedding was called off and she gave me the ring back. That was five years ago, but the pain and regret were still there, deep inside me. That night I waited for Janet to talk about it, but she never did. Two weeks later, I was about to say something, but I decided to refrain. Hell, if she wanted to ask me about it, I'd wait until she spoke up. Honey, I'll be out of town next week. I'll be working at an auto show in New York. I thought you were going to be attending a ski equipment convention in Orlando? I was going to, but with the new cars coming into showrooms this fall, I want to see them up close and personal. Steve, at the prices they're asking for them, you won't be able to afford any of those exotic cars, she reminded me. I know that but I can look it up, can't I? And I suppose there will be model hotties everywhere? Sure, but honey, you're the only hot model I want to look at, I said, doing my best impersonation of a big wet puppy. She slapped my arm. It was a large international trade show. At least three teams were setting up booths and running a million miles of electrical wires and computer lines between routers. It took us two full days to set up. We also had to have two meetings a day to make sure we stayed on schedule. By Wednesday night, we were on a roll. The show opened at 10 the next morning and we all had to make sure everything went according to plan. I was alone in the hotel restaurant and struggling to get my steak down when I heard someone talking to me. Do you mind if I sit with you? All the tables are already taken and I hate eating alone. She was so damn cute and had a killer body. Sure, I said standing up and pushing back the chair across from mine. Thank you, she said, sitting down with her tray. I'm Katie, and this is my first show, are they all so crazy? Most of them aren't that crazy, but it's an international show, so it's bigger than most others. What are you going to do? I asked, sizing her up. 
I'll be handing out programs and directing people to the different exhibits. I hope I don't mess anything up, I've never done anything like this before. Relax and don't worry. Even if you run into trouble, pet your pretty eyes and say you're new here but would be happy to help them in any way you can. No guy will get mad at you once you turn on your charm. Do you think I have pretty eyes? I nodded in agreement and we both went back to eating. I finished first and bowed out, telling her I had to attend the update meeting. Remember what I told you and tomorrow will be a walk in the park for you. Maybe I'll see you on the floor, I said goodnight to her with a smile. Everything was ready and we would find out by 10 o'clock tomorrow morning how well we had done. Janet called me just after 11. Hi honey, how are you holding up? I'm very busy and looking forward to this week being over. How is your new project coming along? Before I left, she informed me that they were working on an important case this week. So far so good. Mine should be ready Saturday night. You haven't bought anything yet, have you? Not yet, but the exhibit doesn't open until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Who knows, maybe I'll be driving home on Sunday in something sleek, elegant and sexy. Listen, Buster, the ONL. Why smooth, sleek and sexy thing you're going to dive into on Sunday night is me. I don't have four wheels, but I have everything you need, and you should see how I handle the curves. We both laughed and I told her I missed her. Don't worry, I left my credit card at home on purpose, and besides, my bank account can't take a hundred grand hit. Hell, I only had 5,000 in savings and a lot less in my account, not counting my nest egg 401k. I didn't see Katie on the floor once on Thursday, which was probably a good sign that she was okay. They always hired all the most beautiful models in town for these shows, and it usually worked. We had two minor problems, but nothing more than that. At about 5.30 the first day was over and I was feeling pretty good. Tonight for dinner I spared no expense and ordered my favorite dish, two lobster tails. I took a bottle of white wine and was just starting to eat when Kathy appeared. Sit down, girl, and tell me about your first day on the floor, I said, pulling out a chair. We spent the next hour talking and discussing our first day. I didn't realize it would be so crowded. I had to restock every hour. Wait until tomorrow and Saturday if you think it was crowded today. We'll probably have twice as many people. My feet hurt after standing on them all day. I'm not used to standing on hard surfaces for eight hours without a break. By gel shoe inserts, they'll do the trick. Steve, have you seen the shoes I have to wear? They're four-inch high-heeled shoes with a strap that holds here and there. There's not enough material to hold the insert in. Maybe you can attach them to the bottom of your legs, you know, on the inside of your panties. And how in the world did you come up with that trick? Or better yet, how often do you wear panties? She was laughing now. It's funny, very funny. I know a lot of girls who work on the show, and that's what they do. And I suppose you're such a nice guy that you volunteered to help them with the panties, she said, still laughing. Oh, sorry Steve, I didn't mean anything by that, I was just kidding. No offense, but if you're going to have a career in a short period of time, you need to know all the tricks of the trade. I have been asked more than once about the intricacies of the profession of male exponent. Katie, there are assholes everywhere. Just smile at them, tell them you're not interested, and move on. But don't be surprised if you see more than one girl not leaving. I know more than one person who makes a living catering to a certain clientele. That's their business, and I'm not going to judge what the other person does. We talked for another half hour or so and finished my bottle of wine. Would you like to go soak in the hot tub tonight? I think it's just what my body needs. I'd love to, but I have a big day tomorrow and I need as much sleep as possible tonight, but thanks for the offer, maybe next time. I apologized, went up to my room and called Janet. Her cell phone wasn't answering. She was probably back in her van taking pictures. She always turned her cell phone off when she was working. I left a message. Friday was a rough one, but it was uneventful for a change. Kathy never showed up for dinner, and all the floor staff were invited to the lounge to toast the hotel from 9 to 10 o'clock. I figured a shot or two would relax me enough to go straight to sleep. There was only one day left, but Saturday was usually a crazy day. 
I couldn't see Kathy, but I could hear her right behind me. I'm not going to tell you again to get your hands off me, I heard her say. I got up and went to look for her. In one corner, she was sitting with a middle-aged man. He didn't seem to be taking no for an answer, and she was more than upset. I didn't recognize him as one of my employees, and at the moment I didn't care who he was, I just needed to get this over with. Sorry dear, I'm late, I was tied up on the floor, I said to the two surprised people. Where are my manners? Hi, I'm Steve Moore, and I assume you've already met my fiancé Kathy, I said looking directly at him. Honey, we don't have a problem, do we? No, honey, that man was just leaving, she said, looking at both of us with relief. Yeah, I should get going. It was nice meeting you both. He disappeared into the crowd. Steve, I can't thank you enough. He pawed me the whole time and didn't want to leave, she said with her wide smile. I owe you a drink. She pointed to the waitress. We spent the next two hours talking and drinking. I had three, she had one, but hell, they were free, so I didn't care. When she asked me to dance, I said yes, but stopped at one when she started getting a little too friendly with the hand waiting. You're just beautiful, Steve. Handsome, smooth and a great dancer. Can I talk you into joining me in the hot tub tonight? Maybe tomorrow, Katie. I've got another crazy day ahead of me, and I'll need to get my act together. I've had too much to drink today, and 20 minutes in the hot tub will probably put me to sleep. With me in the hot tub, I'll make sure you don't fall asleep, she purred, looking into his eyes. You really are a naughty girl, aren't you? I hope I can trust you to go back to your room alone, because there's going to be hell on earth at the showroom tomorrow. Get some sleep and I'll see you tomorrow. This girl is built for comfort, I said to myself. I knew Ferraris that probably wouldn't be able to keep up with her once she started moving. I felt a stirring in my loins as I headed to my room. A cold shower and checking messages was just as well. Hi honey, Janet's message began. Sorry I missed you but I just wanted to say hi, I love you and can't wait for Sunday. Remember, no cars. With that she finished and I turned off the bedside lamp. There was still light coming through the window, and as my eyes adjusted, I remembered how five years ago another girl who worked on the floor came to my room. I opened the door, and as she walked in, I realized I was in trouble. I was engaged and never planned on taking her to bed, it just happened, so I told Beth. That night we partied together and went to our rooms, but she wasn't tired, and I guess I wasn't either. We didn't make love, but rather used each other to fulfill our animal needs. We did it three times that night, and she did things to me that Beth had never dreamed of. We would never see each other again, so there were no regrets, no shame, just great sex. The only problem was that when she left my room, one of my employees, who was also a friend of Beth's, saw her. I never knew what came over me when I got home. At first I tried to lie, but when that didn't work, I threw myself on her mercy and begged for forgiveness. I was drunk and didn't realize what I was doing. It was just sex and I promised her I would never do it again, but it didn't work. She left me and never wanted to see me again. There was no wedding, no bride, but there was more than enough grief and heartache. I was shit in everyone's eyes. I swore I'd never make a mistake like that again. On Saturday, I walked around the showroom looking at all these beautiful cars. I must have said if only a million times to myself, dreaming of owning five or ten of them, and that night I bought an extra lotto ticket. How was your last day on the floor? I asked Kathy, who replied with a wide smile that it went great. It's not too bad, if you figure it out. I think I almost enjoyed it, and I also made some money. She looked very well and rested after a full day on the floor. She could have a great future if her looks held up. If you don't mind me asking, how much did you make a day here? $25 an hour Thursday and Friday and $50 an hour today. That's not counting lodging, food, and clothing charges. All in all, it was worth it. Well, I've seen a few cars I'd like to own one day, but unless I win the lottery, it's never going to happen. Steve, remember, you promised me you'd join me in the hot tub tonight, and I'm holding you to that, she reminded me in an almost scolding tone. The hotel complex gave me a bottle of champagne, and I'll bring it with me. How about 
I nodded and decided I'd give her 20 minutes to lounge in the hot tub before I went back to my room. Katie was sitting in the tub waiting for me. Her costume consisted of so much material that if you put both pieces in your hand and closed it, you couldn't see anything. The bottle was more than half empty and Kathy didn't seem to feel any pain. I poured myself a glass, climbed into the tub and enjoyed the hot water jets massaging my sore legs and feet. More than once I had to try to control Kathy's feet. They seemed to be on a search and destroy mission to get into my shorts. When she approached me and told me to relax with no one else around, I realized I was in trouble. Katie, if you stay in that tub any longer, you're going to be labeled good for you. When she tried to climb out of the tub, she stumbled. I ended up catching her, breasts and all. Perhaps you'd better escort me back to my room? I think I'm a little dizzy from drinking champagne, she declared with a drunken laugh. I helped her up and took the half-empty bottle. On the way to the room, she pushed her breasts into my arm or chest more than once. When we got there, she couldn't even find the room keycard slot. I grabbed her, pushed the door open and propped it open with the doorframe. You wanna come in, I have a warm bed, among other things, she said. I can guarantee you won't be disappointed, she leaned her head forward, licking my ear and neck. It took every ounce of moral fortitude I had to keep her in line. On a scale of 1 to 10, she was a 12-year-old, and at her request, I gave her a 14. As much as I'd like to, I just can't. There's a girl waiting for me at home that I care more Abu. T than sleeping with you. And even though you say no one will find out, I will and I'll never see her again if I take you up on your offer. So even though I'll probably need two cold showers tonight, I have to decline your offer. Are you sure? I'm more than sure, I replied. Katie, let me help you to your room, I said as I put my arm around her and guided her into the room. Steve, that won't be necessary, she said, tying her top and straightening up, and turned to me in a stone-cold sober voice. Katie, are you okay? I'm fine, and you probably are too. I don't understand, I started as she pushed the door open and I saw in the mirror the reflection of another person in her room. Janet? I said as I walked through the door. Janet, what are you doing here? I stuttered, looking around at all the camera equipment. Kathy followed me into the room and closed the door. Steve, I can explain all this, Janet sounded like a kid who'd been caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Janet, what the hell is going on here? I asked, looking first at her and then at Kathy, they both looked nervous. Sorry Steve, I had to make sure, were the next words out of her mouth. Jesus fucking Christ, I screamed. Was this all a fucking setup? I looked at Katie. And you were the fucking bait? My face must have turned ten tones red when I realized what had happened. Steve, it's not as bad as it looks, Kathy said, trying to reassure me. Katie, I called out to her, I think it would be in your best interest to keep your fucking mouth shut right now. She put on a t-shirt and sat down on the bed at the other end of the room. At that, I turned my attention back to a nervous Janet. Why? Why are you doing this to me? And then it hit me, talking to my mom. I guess in your book, once a cheater, always a cheater, right? Steve, with Tammy and everything, I had to be sure. Well, I guess you got your damn answer. Satisfied? Steve, please don't be mad. What do I have to be mad about, Janet? I spat back at her. My girlfriend thinks I'm a cheater and hires some slut to get me into bed and prove I'm not worthy of her perfect ass. Oh, I'm sorry. After four days of harassment with sex and alcohol, she couldn't do it, which means I had to pass your fucking test. Well, Janet, you can take that fucking test and shove it up your ass for all I care. So excuse me, I've never hit a woman before, and if I don't leave right now, I might. I literally ran out of the room. I didn't go back to my room, and when my cell phone rang, I threw it against the hotel wall. Later I would berate myself for this act. I was in no condition to drive so I started walking or should I say running. An hour later, I was still angry but already exhausted. I got back to my hotel room at 2 in the morning. I was physically and emotionally exhausted and fell asleep just after 4 in the morning, still in my clothes. Waking up brought me back to life. 
After taking a shower and shaving, I went to the conference room. It was a madhouse, everyone was dismantling their booths and packing up. I met up with my supervisor, Tim. We went over the schedule and dove headfirst into work. Three hours later, it was time for cleanup. Boss, I tried calling your phone, but it went straight to voicemail, Tim told me. I had an accident with my phone and I'll have to get another one tomorrow, I explained. Just make sure everything is cleaned up before you close the doors. I don't need anyone else sitting on my ass tonight before I leave. You guys did a great job this week, I'll see you on Monday. I walked out. I checked out of the hotel, returned the rental car, and flew home before noon. For the first time in my life, I was glad to be without my phone. The three and a half hour flight home gave me too much time to dwell on my problems. I tried to fall asleep, but my brain and the movie on the plane prevented that. Every time I thought about what Janet had done, I got angry all over again. I felt like a puppet that had been played for four fucking days. I guess that was the big project she told me she'd been working on while I was out of town. And here I thought she was actually working, not trying to do her best to get me to cheat on her. The only thing that made me glad was that I didn't. It would have been so damn easy, and Katie was so incredibly sexy, but I resisted. I turned out to be a lot stronger than I thought I was. I landed, got my luggage, and walked out to my car parked in the long-term parking lot. All I wanted to do was drive home, take a shower, and drink a couple dozen beers. I needed to get drunk to ease the pain of being pranked. The answering machine was full. Some were from my boss wondering why he couldn't reach me on my cell phone, one from Tim who said it was 3 o'clock and he was leaving because everything was ready. The others were from Janet. Steve, please call me, we need to talk, and another, I'm sorry, it was a stupid thing to do and I'm sorry, we're only 2 out of 20. The last person in the world I wanted to talk to right now was Janet. When I finished the five bottles of beer I had in the fridge, I went for the bottle of white Zinfandel I had in my wine rack. I wanted to get drunk enough to fall asleep so I wouldn't have to relive the last four days over and over in my brain. I wondered how far Kathy would go if I gave in to her. I know Janet was in her room Saturday night, but what about Friday when she wanted to go to the hot tub? Saturday when I walked into that room, I remembered seeing all of Janet's camera equipment and now I put two and two together. She was always in the background taking pictures of the two of us. God, so that's why she never picked up the phone when I called her. I was pissed off again. When I saw the sun through my bedroom window, I realized I was late for work. I felt lousy. I undressed and took a shower. As I stood in front of the bathroom mirror and shaved, the mirror reflected back to me that I looked like shit. I deleted all of her messages, but as I walked by I noticed 10 new ones. I must have really been drunk last night, I hadn't heard the phone ring once. I smiled, mission accomplished. Damn Steve, I haven't seen you look this bad in a long time, my boss said when I showed up two hours late. You're not back to your old self Steve, are you? God, I sure as hell wouldn't want to put up with that idiot again. Just had too much to drink last night, that's all, I reached for the coffee pot, hoping that coffee would help me feel human again. Good because we need to agree on a schedule for the morning, and I need to discuss something with you as soon as possible. Henry, give me five minutes to finish my coffee and check my email, and I'll meet you at your office. He nodded in agreement and left. And what the hell did I do? Of the 42 letters, 75% turned out to be garbage. A third of them demanded a yes or no answer, and the rest would have to wait until I met Henry. Have a seat and close the door, he asked the receptionist to hold our calls. We got the first feedback from the convention center about last week's trade show, and it looks like we're having a little trouble. Oh shit, were the first words that echoed through my brain as I tried to remember what we had messed up or forgotten. They called me this morning and said that because of the way we handled the New York show, they want us to do San Francisco and Detroit. I tensed and squirmed, waiting for the bad news I'd almost missed. Did I get that right, did they like it? They didn't just love it, they loved the way you and Tim handled the crew. They said it was the best show in the last five years, and with the exception of a couple burps on Thursday, everything went off without a hitch. I wrote a little thank you check for you and Tim for all your hard work last week, he glowered. They want you and Tim to visit both sites this week. 
They want to explain what they need and set up a schedule for next year. This is a huge opportunity for all of us. This week? Why, do you have something going on that I don't know about? The only thing I know is that we have a hell of a lot of paperwork this week that needs to be redone from last weekend. I wanted to cry. I won't be able to fly out until tomorrow, and I think three days at each site will be more than enough. You and Tim will stay as long as they need you both, okay? You're the boss, I replied. Damn right. Now get out of here, get to Tim's and get on the earliest possible flight tomorrow. And by the way, where the hell is your cell phone? It's kind of broken. Well, buy him today. I can't have my best guy out on the field without him. On the way back to my place, I picked up a replacement. I called Tim and told him the short version. He wasn't thrilled about leaving town again tomorrow. Look at it this way. When you hand your wife a fat bonus check and tell her to go nuts, she'll probably fuck you to death when you get back. He laughed, but I didn't. I still had one more issue to deal with before I left. I got ready for 8.30 and was just going over my plan of action when her letter arrived. It was pretty much the same as all the others. She apologized that I wasn't supposed to see her and that she needed to meet me so we could talk. She said something about the L word and that we could work through it. I hit the reply button. Janet, I think the last thing in the world you want to do right now is talk to me. I'm still so angry I don't know how I would act or what I would say, but it wouldn't be nice. I'm going away for about a week and a half and by the time I get back I'll probably have calmed down a bit. While I'm gone, I need you to do one thing, and only if you want me to. I need you to think hard about why you did this to me, or should I say, to us. You can give me the long version or the short version and we see. And do it by email or in person, that will be your prerogative since you started it. All I want to know is why I think you owe me this much. Why don't we set up a meeting in a week, this Thursday, at the Chinese restaurant where we had our first date, maybe that will bring us some luck. Unless you're trying to trap some unsuspecting husband that night. So, I'll see you Thursday at 7.30. If you decide not to come, I understand. Steve. Realizing that I had taken an unfair jab at my unsuspecting husband with the comment, I hit the submit button anyway. We were busy, but I couldn't take my mind off Janet in those four hellish days. We finished a day early and spent all day Wednesday in the office going over papers. Wednesday night I didn't sleep a wink, revising what I was going to say a thousand times and changing it for the tenth time. By Thursday night, I had no idea what I wanted to say. I decided I would just do it. We took a booth at the back of the room and immediately ordered to be alone. Janet came prepared, heck, she had everything she was going to say typed out, double-spaced. Small talk was scarce. We both knew what we were here for. She asked if she could speak first. I could see she was ready to explode. She made several valid arguments. She talked about her husband cheating on her, that I had cheated on Beth, that she had serious trust issues, and that she needed to look out for Tammy. The fact that she kept hearing female voices in the background every time I called her made her somewhat suspicious. After all, she just had to find out for herself if I would cheat again if the opportunity presented itself. She hoped that we could get through this and that she thought we might have a future. I thought about what she'd said, and I'd already forgotten what I was going to say the time I wished I'd made a list like hers. Janet, you've made some good arguments, especially about protecting your daughter. Your story, mine, and what happened are all valid arguments, but my first question is why didn't you just talk to me about your concerns? Did you think I would lie to you or just tell you what you wanted to hear? You see, in some ways you're like my ex-fiancé Beth. Deep down, like her, you don't believe that a person can change. She started to say something, but I stopped her. Please let me finish. My mom told me herself that I had a wandering eye, but that was a long time ago, and I'm all grown up now. I've shown you, and even more so myself, that I've changed and that I'm stronger than I thought I was. And you know what made me so strong? It's my feelings for you. Steve, we'll get through this, you didn't cheat, Janet reminded me. This time. And what happens in six months, a year, five years, when you start doubting again? Who will you send then? 
You say you had trust issues, and now I have the same issues. Every time I see a pretty girl smiling at me or flirting with me, I wonder if it's one of your plants. If I see the same guy twice, I'll wonder if I'm being followed. And finally, I'll always wonder if you're bugging my hotel room, my car, or looking at all my emails and text messages on my phone. You see, trust is a double-edged sword and it swings both ways. We're both cut and bleeding right now, and our relationship is on life support. Steve, I know I overreacted, but I've been hurt before and I didn't want to go through it again. Relationships are short-lived at best, hell, 50% of marriages end in divorce, but I put myself out there, analyzed and supposedly trusted you, it looks like I was wrong. You destroyed what we had before I left Wednesday morning, and now I don't see how we can get it back. Shall we try it? A remorseful Janet asked. I'm willing to give it a try, I just don't want you to get your hopes up. We talked and had a nice dinner. Neither of us ate much, but we kissed goodnight, which wasn't a big deal, though. We emailed and even met up two more times, but what we had was almost dead. Son, I can't believe you're breaking up with Janet over such a trifle. Can't you see that she just wanted to make sure you were real? Mom tried to convince me that Janet was right. I don't think anyone saw it from my point of view. Never mind, we're almost done. After work on Thursday, I decided to take Tim and his wife out to dinner as a sort of thank you for all the hard work he had put in over the past two months. When we entered the restaurant, a little after seven, I saw her, but fortunately she didn't see me. Maybe we should look elsewhere, Tim said, looking at me for direction. And miss the show? Not in my life. We ate and drank, and I watched and learned. We touched each other with our hands, laughed, and even kissed each other on the lips a few times. After dessert, I told Tim that I would see him in the morning. Steve, please don't do anything stupid. Henry will get his ass kicked if I let you go to jail. Don't worry, I'm just saying hi to an old friend, I walked over to their table. Good evening, Janet, I said, taking her by surprise. I see now that your work involves much more than just taking pictures, as you told me. She started to say something, but stopped halfway through. Apparently the truth and credibility in your book only goes one way, too bad. Well, go on, I wouldn't think of interrupting someone when they're doing something they really enjoy. I heard Steve wait, but continued walking to his car. I got another email from her trying to explain that she only works and has never slept with any men, but I never responded. Trust. I never knew that one word could cause so much pain and suffering in my life. But now when I meet someone, I tell them in advance what I expect, and if they can't handle it, well, there are plenty of fish in the sea, as they say.